What's up, everybody? I'm Justin Young. He is Josh Tech. Welcome to Monday. Welcome to Commitment Catch-Up right here on the Fast Break. Brought to you by Hoopscene.com. We appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate you watching. And we appreciate your patience as I'm still battling all this, man. I'm still playing hurt, but I'm showing up, trying to be like Michael Jordan in the finals. This is the flu game. It's been the flu week, really. Uh, but uh, who, no one came here to listen to my medical updates. So we're going to talk about four commitments this week uh, that we really liked and guys that we're familiar with and, and, and fits that we really kind of want to get into. So, Josh, I like this four, this quartet that we're going to talk about. And right out of the gate, we'll start from the top. Enrico Borio is a guy that we love, we're excited for, and he finally found a place to call home. He's headed to Jacksonville. How much do you like this uh, commitment for the Dolphins? I love it. I'm a big fan. Uh, Jacksonville was there, very present at all of you know Florida Pro's games. They're very present during the high school live periods. I got to see Enrico kind of his journey throughout the spring into the summer as a recruit, as he rose up the ranks, as this you know big skilled forward, does a lot, can handle the ball, can pass the ball, can shoot the ball, can score at the rim, athletic, checks a lot of boxes. Um, saw all the kind of his rise up through a Division One kind of, and where he ended up settling. Jacksonville was, I feel like, there for the entire story. So this. Yeah. This just makes sense. Like it, it worked. Like I, I just in my head seeing them, watching him so much, they just became associated in my mind. I was like, "Yep, that that sounds perfect." Big fan of this for both parties. He stays in Florida. He gets to go play at Jacksonville. Like I think everybody wins here. I totally agree. I, I think he's one of the most versatile guys that we have in the class of 2024 in the Southeast. I think he's a player too. That sometimes when you add a player it kind of shifts the way that you have to recruit because now you have to find a player with a different skill that you're trying to build this roster where I feel like Borio has so much skill that you can add him to whoever you add to your class. If you need to be a primary passer, a primary creator, he can be that guy. If you need him to be a rebounder, he can be that guy. If you need him to be a pop and pick or pick and pop guy, he can be that guy too. So I like the versatility that he brings to the table. In fact, so much so that I texted their staff. I said, I think you get all conference guy. Uh, as an upperclassman with, with Enrico Borio. I love the upside and the value that he can be as a collegiate player with other smart players around him. Uh, we certainly saw that this year at the Hoopsine Association with Florida Pro. So like you said, all the boxes are checked and, and we couldn't be happier for an all Hoopsine uh, Association guy. First teamer, easy choice, yeah. uh, top performer, darn near everywhere that he played this year. I was going to say, like, I feel like we've, covered him on top performer stories so the entire the entire spring and summer like he was just delivering weekend after weekend honestly like i'm think i was thinking about this when he committed like he's probably one of the most versatile guys and honestly like one of the most storied um quietly one of the most storied guys that we've had out of florida pros program since we've been working with those guys since we launched like like a really decorated guy and, and yeah. quite frankly like a, a player that never disappointed so that uh, that says a lot about the player that he is and i think he'll be that same kind of player in college as well so i really like that one a lot uh, there is a florida flavor here in commitment catch up another floridian is off the board headed to georgia southern and that's jordan tillery a player that we saw uh in a number of different settings and a number of different venues what let me ask you this josh check what part of jordan tillery's game do you think translates the easiest to the collegiate level um, I guess I would go with his consistency because I feel like every time I see Jordan Tillery, he's like impressed in, in any regard, whether it's, you know, at, on a high school level, whether it's, you know, on travel circuit, whether it's the EYBL circuit, whether in, in any kind of event, any kind of setting, I feel like he's always, you know, 17 kind of points slash into the basket, kind of getting really whatever he wants and really succeeding. He was one of the guys that I would just kept touting as like a, Hey man, college coaches, what, where are you at? Like, this guy is just delivering every time I see him time after time after time. Like he's very consistent, done it with multiple platforms on multiple different stages with multiple different teams with multi, you know, a bunch of different people around him. So he kind of proved it at every kind of iteration that I could, that I could imagine. So I'm, I'm going to go with consistency here. I think as a slasher, as a, you know, bigger guard slash kind of wing, um, he's going to be able to do a lot on the floor. And I think this is a really great one for Georgia Southern. And back to back weeks, honestly, for great commitments for Georgia Southern. Yeah. The Eagles picked up a really good one last week in Links and Boyd out of North Carolina. Uh, so a really nice start, a really nice balance uh, of talent, and a good foundation for Georgia Southern to build upon uh, out there in Statesboro. I mean that that is uh, significant, really, when you look at it. Yeah, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a really good backcourt in time. I really have faith in that. 
Uh, without a doubt, without a doubt. Uh, you know, one of the things I think you can gauge a program on their success is their ability to recruit without borders. And what I mean by that is, are you a program that can go to wherever you need to go to go find a player? And Virginia did that this past weekend by going out to the Seattle area, Pacific Northwest, and landed a commitment from Jacob Kofi, a uh, yeah. really versatile six foot eight, six foot nine. Uh, really good in the mid range. I've seen him quite a bit out here on the West Coast. Really been uh, impressed with him at Section Seven, and, and it's really not a surprise too because Tony Bennett loves to go back to the Pacific Northwest and look for players, given his time back at Washington State. It's those now, connections, man. Those connections. There's always connections. There's always connections. But Jacob Kofi is off the board. And like I said, I think he is one of the best mid range shooters. Really good elbow shooter uh, and kind of interesting player. Let me let me throw this anecdote out to you, Josh. That might be something to think about. I was talking with a coach uh, at Section 7, and he asked my thoughts on Jacob Kofi. And I said, I liked him. I thought he was like a top 75 player. And he asked if I saw um, Keegan Murray in high school. And I did at DME down in Florida. And, you know, Keegan took a postgrad year and really, like, elevated himself, got to Iowa as a slow burn. Now he's, you know, really solid player in the NBA. I'm not saying I think Jacob Kofi is, but this coach really kind of put the seed in my head to think about – what Jacob Kofi could be down the road as a player in conjunction with the type of player that Keegan Murray is. And uh, listen, if I know one thing about Tony Bennett, I know he's a really intelligent basketball guy and knows how to develop and uh, cultivate smart players. And I think Jacob Kofi makes a lot of sense for what Virginia is doing um, here as well. Let's yeah. stay in the ACC and go down to the flats at Georgia tech. And, and this happened Right after we committed, or we did last week's commitment catch-up pod, so it's a little dated, so forgive us a little bit, but significant enough that I wanted to bring it up. And that is Jaden Mustoff, who's an overtime elite, basically is going to go right across the street for college now in Midtown. Right in his backyard. Georgia Tech. And we talked about this before on Fast Break Friday a couple of weeks ago, how that is going to be a really significant thing to watch moving forward. And, and, and Josh, let me ask you, do the rambling wreck – are they really starting to open up what could be a significant pipeline here that we need to really pay close attention to in recruiting circles? Yeah. I mean, the, the pipeline could be open, but I think what this says more so, and like, if you kind of go back through and look at the visitors they've had on campus and, you know, just the recent recruiting trends since the new staff has been, um, been there. I think that this really shows that they're taking swings for the fences as opposed to kind sure. of, you know, I felt like Georgia tech had not had very much recruiting momentum, I feel like this this one, plus all the guys they've had on campus, plus just kind of, I don't know, it just feels like there's a new bit of swagger in the program, and it, it feels like their recruiting is going to start picking up after this one. We talked about this when Damon Stoudemire was hired, and I mentioned on that podcast that the important thing for Georgia Tech is to be relevant, and I really yeah. believe that. And I think this kind of puts them in that category of relevancy and having overtime elite in their backyard that that relevancy is starting to pipe up and we'll see guys like Jade Mustaf. I, I honestly thought he was going to be an NC state guy. I really did. I thought uh, he was going to be a Maryland guy. Yeah. So, I mean, like, so it's interesting, right? So Georgia tech gets this really significant win. And if you're a Georgia tech fan, listen, if you love Josh Okogi, I think you're going to really love Jade Mustaf because he's going to bring that same sort of physicality, a really good defender. I mean, Jade Mustaf gets to the free throw line as good as any player that I've seen. In it's this class cr it's crazy. Like go, if you, if you're watching this, go to EYBL's stats and just go check how many times he was at the free throw line, how many times he drew fouls and all of that. Because it's like – it's honestly like a mind-blowing stat. He he got to the line a ton. It, yeah. It, it's like the last guy I saw that was this effective was Colin Sexton, literally, literally. Like an absolute free throw warrior. And I think that does open up a lot too if you get some guys that can get in there and shoot. Uh, so I think you're to your point – uh, Georgia Tech is in that conversation more than we've seen them be in the times past. And listen, like I said, if you want to be good at Georgia Tech, you got to be relevant in the city of Atlanta. And I think this one certainly helps, especially as OTE continues to bring in really high-level players to be a part of their program right up there in Atlantic Station. So uh, this is a big one to keep your eyes on and big enough that we want to talk about here on the Commitment Catch-Up. So listen, as guys commit, we're going to do this every single Monday right here on Hoopscene.com, the Commitment Catch-Up. As guys make their decisions, we'll add our analysis to their decisions right here on Hoopsie.com on the fast break. We'll have more next week, Josh. Hopefully this is all gone. Hopefully you're going to be better. And honestly, hopefully the odds for the Atlanta Braves are higher and higher to win the World Series this year. Hopefully. hopefully. I'm, I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. I love it. I love it. Josh, appreciate the insight. We'll see you next week. Yes, sir.